All right, welcome to today's Artist of Day slash um, Booze Crew meeting. The guy with the glorious backside right there, that's Mr. Riddle. The Ooh. lady who's looking a little bit older, a little bit wiser, that's Coach Horn. She's 30 today. Um, I am Mr. Coach Asp, and we are here to talk about a new artist. Have I shared my screen with you guys yet? I mean, I don't know how new he is. Okay. An artist new to students who are not familiar. This is John Baldessari. Did you guys know he died this year? What? Yeah. I did not know. Yeah, he died a couple months ago. January 2nd, as you'll see on the screen. Um, so these points right here, you can also see on this fantastic video. This is one of my favorite videos ever. It's narrated by Tom Waits. Um, and it's what? linked in the Google file deal, whatever. Um, but watch it right now. Yeah, that's why I like that idea. Are you sure? Is it too long? How long? Yeah, no, it's like six to minutes. Be honest, children, you probably this won't turn this off and then go backwards and start a video again, this right? Like you would rather play it here and then you can fast forward through it. Hey, that says Clint. This is a film about John Ball. Sorry, okay. the artist. John Baldessari decided that this film should be narrated by me, Tom, Tom Waits. He's a, he got a great voice. Thanks, John. John Baldessari has been called the godfather of conceptual art, a master of appropriation, a surrealist for the digital age. He's made paintings, photographs, billboards, videos, films, sculptures, digital art, credit cards, and an iPhone app. In 1970, John Baldessari burned everything he ever made. It was in a crematorium, so the proper term would be cremated, I suppose. We'll get back to that. John Baldessari is a towering figure. He's six foot seven inches tall. Cool, yeah, you get a lot of, you know, how's the weather up there, blah, blah, blah. John Baldessari is That's taller than you, Horn. Poles, regular height and but Baldessari okay. height. John Baldessari wonders about Clint Eastwood's height. How tall is he? John can be instantly recognized by his big, beautiful beard. So it's pretty much the same color as my hair. John Baldessari has had over 200 solo shows and over 1,000 group shows. John's awards and honors include membership in the American Academy of Arts and Letters, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement Award at the Venice Biennale in 2009. For the Art of Lifetime Achievement. Jesus Christ. This is John Baldessari's coffee machine. That's John Baldessari's Wi-Fi password. In a hundred years, John Baldessari suspects he will be best remembered as... Oh, the guy that put dots over people's faces. John Baldessari is so successful that he carries absolutely nothing in his pockets. Not a thing. I mean, John Baldessari was born and raised What's in that? National City, California. Does that mean you're famous? The Mexican border. Oh, uh, Another that's former that. resident is me, Tom Waits. The art scene in National City in the 1960s was... It was probably me. <laughs> John printed text on canvas and he called it art. He also took photographs with intentionally bad compositions and he called it wrong. And the artist calls it art, it's art. In 1970, John Baldessari decided to cremate all the paintings he made between 1953 and 1966. I still have the ashes in a bronze urn in the shape of a book suitable for your library shelf. This is John Baldessari's library. These are John Baldessari's push pins. Baldessari once said that the most important artist of the 1960s was not Andy Warhol or Jasper Johns, but the director, Jean-Luc Godard. I probably did say it. John Baldessari has a huge collection of film stills organized by subject. Guy riding a horse, Indian riding a horse, guy being shot with an arrow, Indian falling off a horse, and I've got a lot of shots are kissing. This is John Baldessari's dog, Giotto. In 1971, John Baldessari made a famous announcement. I will not make any boring art. Baldessari made a video in which he wrote the phrase until the tape ran out. I will not make any more boring art. Baldessari had many photographs taken of himself, covering his face with different hats, waving at sailboats, hitting objects with a golf club. He was making art. I am making art. I am making art. One day, John Baldessari made a simple discovery. What? 
they hitting hot chicks with golf clubs? No, objects. You should never hit hot chicks with golf clubs. I had these price stickers I was using for something else in some graphic way, and I put them on all the faces, and I just felt like it leveled a playing field. Baldessari's work was hailed as cool, funny, cerebral, sardonic, provocative. I think it's just my take in the world. Are you regretting that we chose to watch this whole thing, Horn? Okay. My favorite part is coming up. His name is internationally recognized. Cool. Ladies think his name sounds sexy. I can live with that. John Baldessari's recent blockbuster exhibition, Pure Beauty, started at the Tate Modern in London, traveled to Barcelona, then to LACMA, then finally touched down at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. John Baldessari has influenced an entire generation of the world's leading artists. The studio is filled with thank you notes and inscribed books. Some of the inscriptions say, gratitude, friendship, thank you. Mentor. John Baldessari believes that every young artist should know three things. Here it is. One. Talent is cheap. Two. You have to be possessed, which you can't will. And three. Being at the right place at the right time. Riddle has heard me quote that over and over again. I will not make any more boring art. I will not make any more boring art. I will not make any more boring art. How do I exit on, full screen? On my end, because of the, uh, I don't know, however the sound goes, it sounds like one of the uh, Daleks from Doctor Who. The what? I have questions. Okay, you can ask your questions, but how do I get out of this presentation? Escape? There, you just... there, you go. there we go. Okay, so what's your question? Uh, what I wrote down hers, and then it keeps... Jumping in and out of my brain. Hold on. I can get it. You can do this. Uh, Prince. Was Prince copying his text paintings with his jokes? I'm glad that you brought that up. I, I feel like if you are familiar with, because when we talk about Richard Prince, we talk about his Yes Rasta appropriation of Corral, the photographer, or Carew. If the and, kids have had me, they've, yeah. Prince is on my list. So and he's got, he's got dots or blobs over a portion of the face. Um, yeah. Yes, John Baldessari is a little bit older and started a little bit earlier than Richard Prince. Okay. I kind of think that Baldessari had an influence on Prince, but I couldn't find anything definitive. If anybody's got uh, a good source on that, you I wasn't can even thinking about Yes Rasta. They had the big canvases with the text across, and that's what I yes. was thinking of Prince's jokes. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that because we're talking about art in context here. Um, we'll come back to this one, but. So paintings of text. Do you guys know who this is? I thought it would be fun to have a little quiz. Uh, I know who it is. I'm going to fail every time. Okay. Kids, I'm on the same playing field as you. Do you know the title of it, Mr. Riddle? Oh, cut with a yes. knife. Cut the, with a kitchen knife? Cut with a kitchen knife. I don't know. It's really long. Through the Weimar beer belly last cultural epoch of the Germany something by Hannah Hock. Wow, the time By you know. Hannah Chuck? No, Hannah Hock. Hock. I really hope Hannah watches this. My German is not great. But you can see that Baldessari was not the first. This was 1919. Um, people had been doing text, but he later would influence. Who's this? Come on. It's a woman artist. Come on, Lauren. Querno? I don't know. I'm here to learn. Riddle, go. Barbara Kruger. Barbara Kruger. Okay, so, and the video made mention of Barbara Kruger. Uh, who's this guy on the left, Jorn Korn? Right. That's Richard Prince. Do you guys know who it is on the right? Yeah. No, but uh, I like that. Ed no. Ruscha. So, ah, um, no, that's Ruscha. <laughs> that's Ruscha. That's how you pronounce it. Hey, oh. can, I, can I interject real quick? Wow. I have broccoli in my teeth. Yes. I just feel like the students are going to remember. Prince is the guy that stole people's Instagram photos, did Correct. a false comment on the bottom, and like repurposed them, printed it. Just so you can connect which artists we're talking Correct. about. Correct. That That's is Richard Prince. Okay. Sorry. Go um, no, you're good. So one thing that I thought would be interesting and fun is to to see where um, Baldessar is getting some of these ideas. Like, 
So obviously he's messing with composition here that you should not put the figure directly underneath the palm tree lest it look like the palm tree is growing out of the figure. Those are weird congruences that you should avoid for the most part when you're doing figurative work. But do you know who this is? Horn? I don't. I remember the piece, but... This is nah. Le Déjeuner sur le Curb. That's my French. The Luncheon on the Grass. Riddle, do you know who it is? Uh... Edouard Manet. Oh. So um, Manet liked to mess with bad composition or challenging the establishment. And everybody after basically has done the same thing. So uh, this, a glass is a glass, but a cigar is a good smoke. Do you guys know what he's referencing in this juxtaposition? Uh, uh, ooh. This, is not a, this is not a pipe. Yeah, this is not a pipe. Magritte's, Magritte's Treachery of Images. Um, he's probably also referencing Freud and Kipling. They have quotes about pipes being smokes anyway. So um, I bring that up because it's kind of Im important to know that Baldessari wasn't just being stupid. Like he's, he's very um, established when the, within the context of art history. But to understand him, you kind of have to understand art history. So let's keep the quiz going. This will be a little bit fun. Okay. Can you guess what painter is being referenced on the left? Duchamp. This one right here? Be, it's got to be Duchamp, right? It is With Duchamp. The... This is yeah. Fountain. Who'd you say, Riddle? That one for me, too. I just said, you said painter, and I... Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're not all necessarily painters, too. Which famous artist? This is the bride strip bare by her bachelor's. Okay, how about this one? Um, uh, Damien Hurst. Hurst, yeah. Damien Hurst. Very good, very good. I tried to start with easier ones. This is Magritte. We just looked at Magritte. How about this one? Splatters. Uh, Pollock. Pollock. Jackson Pollock. Very good. Okay, so that makes the one on the left. I mean, probably Rothko. It is Rothko. It could be so deep. And it if you've be been through painting with me. Yeah. What's that? Not, couldn't it be like Scully also? Or? Uh, yeah, they're not hazy. So uh, it could be another color field artist. But yeah. Color field, yes. Uh, the War one on the right is pretty easy. Warhol? How about the tough ones on the left? This may not be super tough. Uh, the one on the right, uh, Titian? No. It's not Titian. No. no. The one on the left uh, usually has light Steve, flooding Steve. in from the top left, raking across the figures. This pearl earring is typically attached to a girl. Oh, I, yeah. That one maybe called the girl the pearl earring? Yeah, that's Vermeer. it. This is Vermeer. And is that, then, um, hang on, don't say it. Is, is I David won't say or, it. Or David? David, yes, very good. Jacques-Louis David. All right, how about this one? Are this... you about to drink the last of the Croix? <laughs> Don't do it. Um, this is Mont Saint Vitois. He did a lot of still lifes. He's like Are these a. All French guys? Is that is that gonna help? Not all of them. This guy's Russian. Oh. I'll let you know. I've already lost patience for this. Oh, okay, this is Cezanne <laughs> and this is Chagall. So we're moving on. Oh. I knew it was Chagall. Oh man. Uh, oh. Man, what's his name? It's the flag painting, the White House owns it, or the whatever. Do they really? I think so. His American, like, they're, and they're also the weird wax material. Yes, they're all encaustic. This is what? Jasper Johns. Yeah. And yeah. the one on the right is De La Tour. Okay, anyway, I bring that up because Baldessari had a series where he was doing collaborations. He called them double bills. Yeah. And so he would put two figures on there. And it was like Baldessari and Picabia, which is this one on the right. But he would leave off like Morris Lewis on the left there. Anyway, this is a guy I follow on Instagram, Emilio Vialba. Uh, and you can kind of see that same sort of connection. Um, but also Jake and Dinos Chapman, I don't know if you're familiar with them. They bought a series of original engravings from the Goya Trust so that they could intentionally deface them and collaborate with 
Francisco Goya. So. Can you guys hear that in the background of my? No. Okay. Can't hear anything. So, anyway, Baldessari stands on one side of art history, knowing uh, what's come before him, and then on the other side, influencing all these other people after him. So I think he's pretty significant in that right. That if you want to talk about conceptual art or art becoming more of a game of philosophy, Baldessari is important to know. This is his 1970 event of burning everything and then going into making art, not boring art. And there he is with dots over the faces. That's kind of what he's known for. That's where he made it big. He started doing that in the 80s. Um, about the same time Richard Prince was appropriating the Marlboro Man for his untitled image. That's what I was going to ask. So he started making art, or he started gaining fame in the 60s? Yes. And he was doing he was doing a lot of those word paintings and the collaborations and stuff. I think he burned those, and then he would later make different versions of them after he achieved fame. So he was doing that stuff in the 60s and 70s. And then the dots came in the 80s. So Prince was doing his jokes. That was well after his re-photographs. Um, so his text paintings were substantial. So we're talking about Richard Prince and not... The artist formerly... Purple known. Rain! Purple Rain! Yeah, Richard Prince. Not the artist formerly known as. I can share. Um, I take some... Um, I don't know what the right word. Not offense. But number two bothers me a little bit. That you have to be possessed. Because I think that it's like the inspiration is for amateurs kind of thing again. It's like you have to put in the daily work in order to get there. I know, it feels so good. This is why girls wear makeup. Sorry, Clint. I have a ruler. That's about all I can do. Probably shouldn't do that. Don't. Yeah, that's not. Um, <laughs> well, this is, I, I would say, yes, don't wait around for the urge to, to create. That's the whole inspiration is for amateurs. But I feel like it's kind of talking about, you know, if you're going to achieve international fame and you're going to be an artist or bust, like that's it. I do agree. You have to have this level of, that's all I'm going to do. I'm, I don't have a backup plan. I, I'm not going to do anything else. I think that's what you he's talking become about. become a teacher. Who? Oh. try to make it. I'm just kidding. It's the best job in the world. Look at us. Jasper Johns was a teacher. Baldessar was a teacher before he started. Guys, I was kidding. I okay. Love our job. I'm just saying. Okay. Um, speaking of which, can we plug our, the, the Instagram challenge? You may, yeah. this, is the, this is it for Baldessari. Um, the, his advice to young artists. That's all there is. That's all she wrote. All right. Uh, that was great, Jay. Oh, okay. Was Glad can you enjoyed it. Screen now so we can... What go now? Back. Oh, Jay asked, go back to the gallery view so it's just our faces. Back to meeting. Asking? Stop share. I tried. It was, is that better? We're still recording, though, right? Uh, still recording, yeah. Okay, guys, the, the Instagram challenge of the day, if you don't have an Instagram and want to upload it onto Google Classroom, is to go outside and do something un plein air. Uh, oh. Because I know it's real easy to sit on your couch. Un plein air. air. <laughs> but even if it's just your front yard or your backyard, or if you don't have a yard, just go away from people, but go outside, but go do something outside today. If you missed the first two and want to jump back in, the first one was a 15 minute um, continuous contour of your view. Mine was like big chilling on my couch and had all my kids' toys everywhere. Is that yours? Is that yeah. the plain air or the 15 minute? This is a 15 minute and I didn't read the instructions about mm. Continue Always the read the instructions part. all the way through. Way to listen. Uh, so Clint well, failed. It's Everyone really else passed. Listening and I don't get paid to read. Uh, yesterday was a self portrait, which I'm going to do late today because I did. That's it. all I've been I doing did. for all three days. Ooh. Nice, Clint. Can you? I mean, Mr. Riddle, can you post these so I can share them on my classroom Instagram page? They don't need to be private. That sounds like a lot of work. It's really not. Okay. I'm working on it. Well, good challenge. Make sure you check out, is it at CHS underscore drawing? Um, yes, Coach, I mean, Miss Kitson's posting him too, or you can follow my account, which is 
Coach Horns Class underscore CHS. Um, or you can just follow the hashtag, which is hashtag CHS COVID Creatives. Very good. All right. So make sure you learn a little something. Make sure you make a little something. And make sure you stay isolated and safe.